You will face a big, strong Aryan true believer who can push through pain for one second longer than you do. And that's all it takes. When does it start, Mama? It goes on, Judah. The race... The race... is not... over. <gasps> Well, when I first saw the reveal for the new co-op Wolfenstein game where players will be placed into the shoes of BJ's twin daughters, I laughed hysterically and figured that the game would be absolute garbage. And I was right. In terms of actual gameplay, Youngblood is full of loot mechanics in order to encourage the purchase of in-game currency. The AI is fairly retarded. The campaign has lots of level-locked quests requiring you to grind through repetitive side content. The game's fast travel system uses a metro map that you have to physically be present at in order to use. So what happens is that you will often complete a mission only to be forced to backtrack or navigate some other weird area in order to return to your resistance hideout in the Paris catacombs. This is especially annoying when the side quests require you to go to one area of the city, only to tell you that you're missing something else of importance that can only be found in another area of the city. The story itself takes place 20 years after the events of Wolfenstein II The New Colossus, and Big Daddy Blazkowicz has ventured off without telling anyone. Not even the FBI can locate him, apparently, so the task logically fell to his two bratty teen daughters. Perhaps putting Mrs. 50% of crime in charge of the FBI after liberating America from the Germans wasn't such a stellar idea. You are the head of the FBI. Isn't there anything you can do? Listen, trust me, if there was anything any of the agencies could do, girl, you know I would be all over that shit. Oh, but don't worry though, her daughter, Agent 0013, is a computer whiz kid who built a high-powered microphone and read a couple books on medicine. Where do you want antibiotics? He's got peritonitis. Oh, and how do you know this? Swollen abdomen, rapid breathing, his peritoneum is inflamed, which will eventually lead to sepsis and death. He needs antibiotics. <laughs> That's right! The story tries to pull from elements of old movies, like The Rescue, The Goonies, and The Lost Boys. Only instead of hunting vampires in some beach town, searching for lost pirate treasure, or rescuing Navy SEALs from North Korean communists, these Wokenites are hunting Roman saluters wearing Indo-European Thunder God symbols because their dad didn't have the common decency to leave a note. You should indulge in every moment. The game takes the Tiny Hats fantasy of mowing down hordes of Aryans to the next level. That's not surprising, I guess, but this time around it attempted to capitalize off the recent popularity of the Netflix series Stranger Things and insert lots and lots of 80s nostalgia, because I guess a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. I'm getting something from upstairs. There's nothing up there. Wow. None of you knew this was here? Look at this. I didn't know Dad had all this stuff up here. Check this out. That's Seth's handwriting. At the outset, there's a very bizarre scene in which the Blaskovitz sisters have to kill their first Aryan true believer, and the developers turn it into a really awkward teenage rite of passage. Man, are you crying? I'm fucking crying, little nauseous is all. You could have flaked out on me? Hell no. Keine Bewegung! Was hast du noch bereit? Now, I'm sorry, but did these chicks just make out, drive their dad's car off a cliff, or break their mom's favorite piece off a Greek statue? Or did they just stab a guy in his stomach with a shovel and blow his head apart with a high caliber pistol? This set of twins might as well be a lesbian couple, seeing how one is extremely girly and the other is an over-the-top tomboy. Listening to Soph's adolescent male laugh and constant use of the word dude made me feel like a goat with a rubber band tied around his scrotum. Tough 
Oh, I am so much fun. What? It's a compliment. Shut up. <laughs> and of course, there's a Soviet communist in the resistance movement because we all know how morally superior they were. You went hunting with dad. What did you talk about? Ain't telling, Soph. Why don't you go hunting with him yourself sometime? I only hunt Nazis, Jess, not animals. I guess Machine Games couldn't be bothered with considering the irony that Adolf Hitler himself was a vegetarian and that the Germans in the 1930s were pioneers in animal protection laws. In fact, one of the first things the National Socialists did upon gaining power was to outlaw vivisection and kosher animal slaughter. They prohibited the boiling of lobsters and crabs, banned commercial animal trapping, and imposed severe restrictions on hunting. Not only did Machine Games ignore all of this, but they went so far as to have the Germans strap bombs to dogs and train them to rush the enemy. Well, here are some other things that Machine Games will likely never mention. Ethnic German minorities were being persecuted and killed in various European countries prior to World War II. The Allies firebombed several German cities and literally burnt thousands of little German children alive. Unless you was actually there, you, you can't possibly, if I tell you, 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 your brain won't accept it. Mm. I mean... And it's affected you. You never, you never saw... There was no sign of any children because the children melt. They, oh. Their bones were too tender oh. and they just melted. Uh, and if you got in... And nearer you got to the centre of the city, then, then, then you started... You didn't see... You didn't even see skeletons. It was all a sort of a, a jelly. Mm. Uh, with odd bits floating about, not floating. Because and this has stayed with you. Can't you can't talk about it. it this, this has stayed with you throughout the whole of your life. Well, yeah, yeah. You don't witness uh, women and children flying through the air, a light being dragged into these vortex because of the power of the wind. And after the war, millions of Germans were rounded up, put into concentration camps, and systematically starved to death. But normally, no one talks about this stuff because doing so might require sympathizing with, or God forbid even thinking of the Germans as real, three-dimensional, flesh-and-blood human beings, and not irrational avatars of evil meant to incite the modern political left to violence. I feel unstoppable. So, like, like, like I could take down Sarah Jane from school. Sarah Jane stole your lunch money, Jess. Doesn't make her a Nazi. Yeah, close enough. Well, over this window doesn't mean shit unless it comes with some enforcement, so yeah, this is enforcement. Now, in case you're not familiar with the previous two games, the cause of the extremely advanced technology isn't due to German ingenuity. Oh no, those silly goyim and their small brains could never be responsible for a moon base. Nope. You see, those deceitful Germans stole all their technology from an ancient mystical order of kosher scientists called the Dat Yishud. Now, I've complained about this previously, but I'm gonna do it again because it's extremely irritating that Machine Games just had to deprive the Germans of any credit of having made significant technological advancements in the 1930s and 40s. Hell, even after the war, the Russians and Americans immediately went to work smuggling German scientists out of the country to use them in their expertise for the space race. But I suppose if we admit any of this, then it would follow, reasonably so, that there is something unique and special about Germans worthy of preservation. And perhaps we ought to stop enforcing a de facto extension of Theodore Kaufmann's plan to genocide them through mass immigration, Kollektivschuld, and miscegenation. So this is where the fancy Nazi Gestapo in Paris live, huh? Everything's in German. It's like they just totally erased everything that was here before. <laughs> the story's climax reveals that the leaders of your Paris resistance cell are actually German spies who had rebelled against a disillusioned Berlin and wanted to implement a Fourth Reich, because reasons. And upon discovering BJ in a secret Dai Shud vault, he explains that after having assassinated Hitler, he had inadvertently activated a failsafe protocol and a doomsday device that, upon Hitler's death, would alter global weather patterns and destroy the world. Yes, that's right, boys and girls. Machine Games successfully figured out a way to ham-fist in climate change and to blame it all on white identity politics. What's funny about this whole scorched earth slash doomsday policy of Hitler is that a particular ethnostate in the Middle East today has something quite similar called the Samson Option, in which there will be massive nuclear retaliation against everyone if their country is destroyed or significantly threatened. But go on, Machine Games. Do tell us more about the mental projections of our greatest fucking ally.